Only two, however, appear to have found the slightest favour in her eyes. A certain Lord Gilroy, who owns nearly all the land for miles round Langford, and a young fellow called Gordon Cleeve, the only son of Sir Gordon Cleeve, a wealthy baronet. The girl seems to have coquetted pretty equally with these two. Then suddenly, for some reason or other, she gives Mr. Cleeve to understand that his attentions are distasteful to her, and gives unequivocal encouragement to Lord Gilroy. Gordon Cleeve does not sit down quietly under this treatment. He threatens to shoot first his rival, then himself, then Miss Golding. Finally does none of these three things, but starts off on a three years journey round the world. Threatens to shoot her, starts off on a journey round the world. Summed up Love Day. Do you know the date of the day on which he left Langford? Yes, it was on the 19th, the day before Miss Golding disappeared. But Ramsay has already traced him down to Brindisi, ascertained that he went on board the Buckingham en route for Alexandria, and has beaten out the theory that he can by any possibility be connected with the affair. So I wouldn't advise you to look in that quarter for your clue. I am not at all sanguine about finding a clue in any quarter, said Loveday as she rose to take leave. She did not feel in the best of tempers, and was a little disposed to resent having a case, so to speak, forced upon her under such disadvantageous conditions. Her last words to Mr. Dyer were almost the first she addressed to Inspector Ramsay when, towards the close of the day, she was met by him at Langford Cross Station. Ramsay was a lanky, bony Scotchman, sandy-haired and slow of speech. Our hopes centre on you. We trust you'll not disappoint us, he said by way of a greeting. His use of the plural number made Loveday turn in the direction of a tall, good-looking man, with a remarkably frank expression of countenance, who stood at the inspector's elbow. I am Lord Gilroy, said this gentleman, coming forward. Will you allow me to drive you to Langford Hall? My cab is waiting outside. Thank you. One moment, answered Loveday, again turning to Ramsay. Now, do you wish, she said, addressing him, to tell me anything beyond the facts you have already communicated to Mr. Dyer? No, answered the inspector, slowly and sententiously. I would rather not bias your mind in any direction by any theory of mine. It would be rather a waste of time to attempt such a thing, thought Loveday. The only additional fact I have to mention is one you would see for yourself so soon as you arrived at the hall, namely that Mr. Golding is keeping up with great difficulty. In fact, is on the verge of a breakdown. He has not had half an hour's sleep since his daughter left home. A serious thing, that, for a man at his age. Loveday was favourably impressed with Lord Gilroy. He gave her the idea of being a man of strong common sense and great energy. His conversation was marked by a certain reserve. Although, however, he evidently declined to wear his heart upon his sleeve, it was easy to see, from a few words that escaped him, that if the search for Miss Golding proved fruitless, his whole life would be wrecked. He did not share Inspector Ramsay's wish not to bias Loveday's mind by any theory of his own.